oh yeah today we got a heater for you guys this is gonna be a super clean taper with a trim and lineup and i'm excited to get into this haircut with you so i'm beginning this haircut by dampening my client's hair reason being is because when you're doing a trim you want to make sure that the hair is easily moldable and easy to section this is going to help you stay organized and ensure that you get nice even cuts So we are going to begin this trim by doing the top first. Now what I'm going to do is create three sections, one on the right, one in the middle, and then one on his left. And the reason I create these three sections is because it's going to make it a lot easier for me to stay organized and ensure that I don't get lost in the scissor cutting process. Because I know, especially for me, um, it can be very easy to get lost in the scissor work. So giving yourself nice clean sections will help you stay organized. So now after we create all three sections, I'm going to go ahead and establish my length with that middle guideline. So as you can see, I'm going to pull it up and cut off the desired length. Now this guideline is going to act as my reference point, right? Or my guideline throughout the entire haircut. I'm going to be matching everything to the length I take this down to. So I want to make sure that I have a nice even cut all the way back starting in the front and then working my way towards the back of the head so as you can see we're taking nice clean sections staying patient not not rushing it right little by little step by step now after we complete that middle section we're going to comb everything to the right and we're going to use that as our guideline moving back so i'm going to pull all the hair up and as you can see towards the inside of my finger was the length that we had already cut and we're going to follow that all back until that right side is all the same length super simple super easy especially when you're doing a trim that is like medium length to low length when it's longer, it can be a little harder grabbing so much, um, you know, such a big section. So then I would tell you to do horizontal, but in this scenario, I'm able to start in the front and then pull up small sections moving back. And you'll notice as I get towards the round of the head or the parietal ridge, I'm not rounding while I'm cutting. I wanna keep it as squared and as full as possible on in that parietal ridge area so now i'm gonna re-dampen it because you know i could tell the hair was getting dry it wasn't pulling up as easily and i'm just gonna go back through and ensure that it is all the same length so i'm gonna re-establish that that part start in the front and then work my way back and these are just the details just ensuring that i, I don't miss any little hairs because it can be very easy to miss like you know one or two hairs that might be slightly longer than the rest so i'm just going through making sure that they are all the same length and i'm starting my haircut with the trim first because i just feel you know it's a lot easier to know exactly the length that you're blending into as opposed to doing the taper right in the haircut on the sides and then hoping that you left enough length for the style to actually lay right you know so it's easier to trim the top and then do the clipper work in my opinion now we're going to find that middle guideline once again comb it over to the right and now we're going to use that reference point to go ahead and establish our length on his left side and it's all about finding systems that work for you right this process of scissor cutting would be my system right or my process and I would encourage you to try it, right? Don't just watch this and don't apply it to what you got going on. I would encourage you to apply this to exactly what you have going on. Um, you know, and if it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, there's other techniques that you can use to get nice trims, right? But this is what works for me. And hopefully it's what works for you as well. And while you're watching this video, you're kind of getting a sneak peek of what Dre Clipperhands Academy is like. Right, Drake Clipper Hands Academy is my online course that I dropped where I teach you about next level cutting and how to build, grow, 
your clientele as well as many more topics that are to come soon so if you're a barber and you're struggling to build clientele or you feel like you plateaued with your haircuts and you want to take them to that next level i encourage you to check out Dre clipper hands academy if that is something you're interested in go into the link in the description um and you can purchase the course and join the community listen i'd be super excited to have you part of the community again Dre clipper hands academy next level cutting course it was built for barbers um you know who feel like they're stuck and want to grow their clientele or their hair cutting skills um and i'm putting everything i know into this course into this academy and i think it'll be very beneficial and add value to you in your career so now what i'm doing is i'm going through the hair once again and cross checking just like i did with this right side just to ensure that we have a nice even cut all the way through. And as you can see, I'm taking my time. I really want to make sure that I get a nice even trim. Because especially on his hair texture, if there is any slight unevenness after we dry it, it'll kind of show up as a random lump or like a disconnection point. And that's what we do not want. So I'm just making sure that, we, you know, this is as even as we can possibly get. So now we'll comb everything down. So this haircut, you know, is definitely a popular haircut. It's a nice mid taper. Um, a lot of people would call this an Edgar because of the bangs in the front, but his hair is very short um, So I don't know if I would necessarily call it an Edgar, right? But if it was longer how it was when he came in it definitely it would have been an Edgar So now what we're doing is we're attacking the length on the sides, which there's not much to do Especially since majority of this is going to be done with clipper work But I'm just going ahead and bringing down the length that we established on top to the sides so I'm taking diagonal sections starting in the temple area and moving towards the back of his head. So as you can see, I created my section with the comb and I'm going to pull it out and you'll see at the top of my finger is the length we established on the top of the head. And I'm just going to bring that all the way down. Nice, clean, consistent cuts, you know, that are going to lay properly and lay nicely, which is super important. I'm taking another diagonal section, just making sure that we have it even. Boom, and it's all laying nicely. Now we're getting towards the back of the head, pulling straight off. You don't want to keep your finger flat against the head because we're trying to build weight as we get to the top. It's going to be a gradual blend. So towards the top, I'm pulling away from the head. But as I move down towards the nape or the neck area, I'm getting closer to the head. And this trim before the clipper work probably took me about 10 minutes to give you guys an estimate on what this would take in real time. About a 10 minute trim, about a 20 minute taper and nape lineup plus the lineup in the front. And then the beard, this haircut took me about 45 to 50 minutes. And if scissor work is something you struggle with and you wanna go more in depth with scissor work, I also have a whole section um dedicated to that as well in Dre clipper hands academy so if you need help with your scissor work and staying organized and clean way more in depth than this make sure you head over press the link in the description and join Dre clipper hands academy because that's what it's all about right as a barber we enjoy cutting hair we enjoy getting people together but we want to do it at an effective and efficient level right without sacrificing quality and that was definitely one of my top priorities when I was, you know, creating um, this course, because I know for me, you know, I'm not the fastest barber, but I've been able to learn efficiencies that I'm able to apply throughout my haircutting process to go ahead and get me to the end result quicker without sacrificing quality, right? And I feel like that'd be very valuable to you guys. So now we're over here to his left side. We're gonna finish off this trim on the side. 
so as you can see i'm taking horizontal sections moving back So right now I'm just kind of cross checking, going through the hair, making sure there's not any spots that, you know, are too much bulkier than others. And a lot of barbers would overlook this step of the haircut as far as the trim and kind of rush through it. But in this client scenario, you know, the, his length and the poofiness that he wants to keep on the sides with the length in the fringe, you know, this is a pretty crucial part of the haircut, right? The taper definitely is important, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's more important than the trim, right? I want to give every part of the haircut, you know, the intention and time it needs. So that's what I'm doing here. Just making sure that this is a nice, even cut that is going to lay properly complements it by the taper complements it by the lineup and that's what it's all about right every little detail being as excellent as we can possibly get it I ain't gonna lie, this instrumental is a vibe. This thing going crazy. So now after we complete the trim, we wanna go ahead and blow dry it before we get into our clipper work. So right here, I'm just kinda blast drying it. I'm not trying to give it, you know, any crazy style. I just wanna make sure it's as dry as possible. And you'll notice in the crown, I'm not forcing it in any direction either. I'm letting the, the blow dryers, you know, air, kinda dry it in its natural position. Allow it to lay at the crown how it wants, so that way we don't have any stick up hairs. Right now we're just combing everything back down in place, getting ready to get into that clipper work and get my man together. So what they don't tell you about becoming a successful barber is you shouldn't start off by charging $100 a haircut. And you're not going to make this absurd amount of money without first getting clients in your chair. So what I've done is put together all the information that I've learned in my nine years of being a barber into one place where I teach you about the different forms of marketing that best suit barbering to get clients in your chair. So that way you don't have to filter through tons, tons of content to find exactly what you need, as well as in-depth tutorials where I give you tips, tricks and techniques to take your hair cutting skills to a whole nother level. So if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and join me at Drake Clipper Hands Academy. I hope to see you there. So now we're going to get into the taper. So what I'm doing is I'm debulking the temple area with our two guard open because he expressed to me he didn't want this area too poofy. So I want to make sure that I keep it dark while at the same time, you know, a little closer to the head as well. So now to begin this taper. I'm going to go ahead and start off by establishing my bald line at the end of the eyebrow and where the ear kind of connects to the head. And I'm going to give it that burst shape because, again, we want to maintain, you know, the shade of darkness towards the temple and neck area. So I'm just balding that out with my clipper. Or trimmer, sorry. Now we're gonna follow it up with the shaver just to add another, uh, you know, a couple extra days to the taper because 
as you guys know man tapers grow back very quickly so if there's anything that i can do to go ahead and make a taper last longer i definitely try to do that for the client because they notice right a lot of people will do a taper and only use the trimmer and won't think the client won't notice the next day but they're like man my hair you know needs to cut again so i always make sure to try to get it as close as i can now the next step we're going to come in lever open and we're going up about a finger's width above that uh, trimmer line. Still maintaining that burst shape. Now we're going to close that lever. To tap at that line and we'll open it little by little until we get this completely blended out. So there's some clients who I prefer to do high tapers on. I would say majority of clients i think high tapers or tapers where we blend out the arches look better because i feel like most people don't have nice arch areas or as some people will call it c cups to where you can get that nice curve without pushing it back too much um but with this client specifically he has nice dense a nice dense hairline right so doing a mid taper with a nice hook and the lineup definitely complements his head shape a lot better than a high taper would right so i say that to say because a lot of times we apply the same haircut on everybody right and when it's short there's not really much you can do but there are little things that you can do to, to tailor a haircut to a specific person right so i always try to take that in mind when i'm cutting a client what can i do to this haircut to make it fit them better right then what the picture they showed me is because they might bring in a picture of a taper but the client whose picture it was entire head shape is different entire hair texture is different right and i want to be able to make that known in the consultation while at the same time being pro to provide a meet in the middle option or a completely better option that might suit them better you know because a lot of times clients don't know they don't know the possible haircuts that they are and what you can possibly do for them so i always try to make sure that if i have something in mind that i believe will really enhance their look right and make them look better um i'm always going to try to let them know that respectfully you know so now we're moving on to our biggest guard which is our four guard open and we're trying our best to blend into that length on the sides we are going to come in with thinning uh thinning share over comb later but this four guard kind of free handed with the lever all the way open blends very nicely into that finger length that we did right there on the sides. And I'm lowering the length behind the ear a little shorter than, you know, the length on the entire sides because I think the line on the neck looks a lot better when the hair is slightly shorter. As well as I think when it's slightly shorter at the nape area and kind of gradually builds out towards the top, it creates a poofier look right a more weighty look which the client likes so now we're going to move on to our one and a half lever open and then we'll close it as needed to get rid of that line above that one guard open and you'll see it kind of builds up a little more towards behind the ear so i'm using a lot of the corner of the blade just to ensure that i'm able to blend that out and that taper is coming together now to get rid of that last line, I'm going to come in with a uh, lever all the way open using a lot of the corner of the blade just so I don't risk taking the taper up too high. And now we closed it halfway and we always want to start off open and then close it little by little because if you take off too much, you can't put it back on, right? But if you don't take off enough, you can always take off more. So essentially having the lever open is just kind of a safety net to making sure that you don't take off more hair than you want to. So now we went back to our one guard and we're just detailing, trying to get this taper as clean as we can. And that thing is looking super nice outside of a few details and a lineup.
So now to transition that taper a little smoother into the length on the sides, I'm gonna follow it up with some thinning shear over comb. This always tends to soften it up in a way that is smooth, it doesn't make it look as choppy. So that's why I like to use thinning shears on almost any haircut to be honest with you. Because what thinning shears do is cut in between the hairs without sacrificing too much length, right? So it helps to blend a little better. Now what we're gonna do is reverse taper into the beard. And all that means is the same exact steps that we apply to the side taper, we're gonna apply to the taper going down instead of up, right? So I'm coming in lever open first. Now we're coming in with our one guard, then our one and a half or two guard. And that's gonna blend right into the beard. I believe blending into the beard is a lot easier than blending into the hair because hair on the beard tends to be a lot thinner. Um, and not as dense, so it kind of blends effortlessly in a way if you do it right. And now there's a faint line there um, that I've seen in person. Now the majority of that line that appears is because of his glasses, it has kind of that tan line look. So it was playing tricks on me when I was in the detailing process. But we got this taper right, you know, using the ta tapping with the corner to go ahead and detail it a little bit more. But this taper is pretty much together and now we're gonna go to the other side and follow the same exact system that we did on his left with the taper start off with that burst shape bald line at the end of the eyebrow and where the ear connects and then bought it out and follow that same system up this kind of gives you a different angle to what we did on the other side which is why I kept it in the video Now Barber CT Barber Expo is next month and I know a lot of you guys hear about it right and are like yeah it's the biggest Barber Expo out here but listen man CT Barber Expo if you're going to go to any expo ever if you're going to go to one uh, one a year um, it better be CT right all the barbers are there all the influencers or teachers or educators that you learn from are there so it's filled with opportunities it just puts you around like-minded individuals that are in your industry and in your world um and it's just a fun experience to be at i believe this year is may 5th um in connecticut per usual so again that's next month be sure to catch me with the barber plug there um it's gonna be super fun come show out see the team and again that's next month ct barber expo it's gonna be a great great experience and one thing I've been thinking about doing lately is one-on-one -on -one classes um, where I'm offering, you know, people to come out and just learn how to cut one-on-one -on -one with me. Go more in-depth, more hands-on because I also understand that not everybody is able to learn through video, right? And I want to be able to impact as many people as I can in the way that best helps them learn. So I've been thinking about offering one-on-one -on -one classes. So... If you're watching this video and that is ever something you would be interested in, um, go ahead and leave me a comment down below or follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. And let's see if we can make something happen, man. If I have enough people that are interested in the one-on-one, um, you know, classes, you know, I might, I might really bring that to life. So, again, let me know down in the comments. Show me a DM on Instagram and let's see what we could do. So right now I have my half guard with the lever halfway, just getting rid of that line right below the one guard open. Now we're coming in with, I believe this is our two guard open to kind of clear the sides a little bit more as we move up. Little by little, step by step, this haircut is coming together very nicely. There's just some clients that you cut and it's like, man, dude, this client's hair texture is fire. Um, my guy Nomar in the chair definitely has one of those hair textures. Makes it fun to cut, right? Because a lot of times, you know, when you're in the shop, you can get haircuts that aren't necessarily the darkest hair, that don't really get bald fades, and it can get stale, it can get boring. So when you have someone that comes in with a nice dark hair texture that wants something from skin to a long length, it is always um fun to do so shout out to my kind no more 
now we have our four guard with the lever open this is the biggest guard that we are going to use and i'm coming in and flaring off the shape of his head because again we don't want to create too harsh of a guideline here we just want to clear buck and freehand and you'll notice towards the hairline i kind of combed those hairs away when i was coming in with the four guard that was just so i don't cut off any corner bangs because again we want to keep those now we're coming in with my one and a half lever open and i'm really really utilizing the corner of that blade to break up those dark spots and as you can see that thing looks a lot more consistent And like I said, usually my YouTube tutorials are definitely not 40 minutes, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of how in depth I really go with my haircut tutorials in the academy. Because like I mentioned before, the thing is with YouTube, right? The content, not only does it have to be educational, it has to be entertaining, right? So that kind of limits how or and what I can post if I want it to perform well in the algorithm, you know? But in the, in the uh, academy, I give you unfiltered advice, you know, very minimal edits. I'm not trying to make it look flashy. Just raw advice, raw haircuts, where I take you throughout the entire haircut, right? I have my videographer with me. He's recording me as I'm doing it. I'm explaining it in real time as I'm doing it and solving those haircut issues that pop up in real time as far as in the video, right? And I show you how I tackle it and pivot when we hit those situations. Because we all know we can have a step, we can have a process, but not every haircut is the same, right? Everybody's hair grows differently, grows in a different direction. Some people's hair is thinner, some people's darker. So being able to, to figure out how to apply that system, right, to a specific hair texture or a different hair texture that you didn't learn it off of, that's what Drake Clipper Hands Academy is for. And I show you exactly how to do that. Again, Dre Clipper Hands Academy, link in the description if you guys want to go deeper in your haircutting skills. And when you join the academy, you'll also become a part of a community. I have a Discord that is connected to the course where everyone that is enrolled in the next level cutting course is in this Discord, right? And y'all can communicate amongst each other. You can communicate with me directly instead of having to shoot me a DM or commenting. Um, you'll have direct access to me as well to answer any questions that you are currently going through in your barber career um, in the course, which is a, definitely a bonus add. I had to form a community because I know, um, you know, we thrive in community, right? When you are surrounded by people who are like minded and are striving for the same things, you have people to keep you accountable. And that's what this is for, to put you guys in an environment where you have no choice but to grow right because you're gonna get asked what are you doing right what are any w's you have this week so that's what it's all about again Drake clipper hands academy link in the description so now what we're doing here is we're getting into the neck taper so the neck taper again is the same exact system lever open one open two open and then you guys know the rest um but the thing is i have a lot more surface area right there's a lot more hair to work with in the nape as well as a lot more indentations or dark spots so i'm going to show you how i tackle that in this neck taper here so now after establishing that bald line we're going to come in with our shaver just to get it slightly closer to the skin like i said add some longevity to that taper Now the next step is gonna be our lever open on our clipper. And since we do have a lot more room to blend, I like to make my guidelines slightly thicker or wider in the back of the neck because I want this to be gradual and not such a tight condensed blend. So I'm giving myself about a finger's width and I'm going straight across with it. So coming in and flicking out, coming in and flicking out.
Now to get rid of the line in between, I'm gonna come in close, tap at that line, open up the lever a little bit more, and I'll keep doing that as I get towards the top with that lever all the way open. Now we're gonna follow it up with our one guard lever all the way open, going up again about a finger's width, moving up just slightly higher. Now when I first started cutting this client, a mistake that I made, cause this, this is actually only like my fifth time cutting them, is I made the neck taper super low, right? And that, that mistake, it was a mistake because when I was done and after I lined it up, it didn't really look like I did much as well as in his nape it is so there's so many indentations and dark spots towards the top of the taper that if you don't take it high enough it really doesn't look like you did anything right and there's a there's just a lot of dark spots a lot of weight so when he came in next time i was like man i'm gonna take this taper up a little bit higher right and every time he's come i've taken it up slightly higher and i think in this haircut specifically was the first time that i looked at the neck taper and was like completely satisfied with it and now to get rid of that line in between, I'm coming in with that half guard using a lot of the corner of that blade. Because you'll notice towards where the lineup is going to be, the hair kind of grows um, towards it, right? So when I get towards that nape area, I kind of have to angle the clipper going in towards his neck in order to blend against the grain. Now we're going to come in with our two guard open, going up just slightly higher. And you'll notice more of an exaggerated flick out motion with this two guard um, because it is a bigger guard and I really don't want to leave a line with this. And I'm staying right below that occipital bone. And all the occipital bone in is, is is the bone that sticks out in the back of the head. Now we're gonna move down to our one and a half with the lever open. And then I closed it immediately because I noticed it wasn't gonna take off as much hair as I needed it to. So we're just working with that one and a half, trying to get this as clean as possible. Now you'll see I drop back down to my one guard and I'm attacking those dark spots that are created by those um, bones that kind of protrude in the back. So the back slightly requires just a little more detail work. So that's why I'm applying a little more attention to detail with this one guard. And for me, the neck taper is always super important. I know a lot of barbers tend to overlook it, but I think the neck taper is super important because it's what everybody else sees, right? The client might not necessarily see it when he looks in the mirror, but when somebody has a nice neck taper that gradually blends into like a balk with a nice line on it, bro, it just pops. So I always personally like to pay a little more attention to, de to detail when doing that. But as you can see, I lined up his nape area here on this side. I didn't get that recorded, but that thing is hidden. So now we're just cleaning it up, making sure we don't have any overhang. Trying to get that as clean as we can. And now we're gonna get into the front lineup. So with this front lineup, as you can see on his arch, if I were to lift those hairs up, those were all overhanging hairs. So what I'm doing is just cutting those off and giving him that nice curve without pushing it back more than you have to, right? Because when you line somebody up, you're technically always pushing them back, right? It just, that refers to how much should you actually 
pushed back, right? Because some people might need it slightly pushed back more than another person. But in this case, he has really dense and full arches. So all I'm doing is outlining his natural arch. And you can see with the lineup, man, this taper is popping way more than usual. Now we're going to line up the other side of the taper starting at the bottom. You can see that thing makes that taper pop. Go to a whole other level. Now we're going to go to the top and ensure that we have a nice round shape behind the ear without taking it up too high or what most would say white walling him. And the lineup with tapers definitely act as the framework to the entire haircut. So always keep that in mind. This is a very important part. It outlines everything. It'll bring out the good things and the bad things. So it'll show you areas that you could potentially go back in detail as well. And when people have longer hair, I always like to comb the hair more than once just to make sure anything that might hang over is cut off. So now let's line up the other side of the arch. So we're going to the top of that arch. Then we're going to go to the bottom and connect those two points in the middle. And using the corner of the blade helps out a lot when lining up the arch. It helps you get into those hairs that grow at weird angles like towards the ear. Now we'll comb it back down, reline it once again. Now we're going to hit the front line up with some hairspray just to hold it in place because we are working with a fringe or some bangs and we're going to keep these fairly low we're not going to take them up super super high then we'll let it air dry and we're going to come in and line it up so now i'm going to start in the middle and that'll be my guide for the rest of the lineup so we wanted to take it up just slightly i would say about half an inch definitely not where his natural hairline would be um, and follow that straight across but honestly I think in this scenario this client's lineup looks a lot better on him than his natural lineup would because his natural lineup is very round meaning it's super high in the middle and low towards the edges so keeping the bane bangs actually complements his forehead and his head shape much much better So now we're going to bring that front line up over towards his right corner. And you can already see, man, this haircut is going to another level with this lineup. It doesn't need any enhancements. His hair is super dark, so it's already popping. So we're going to comb those hairs down and reline it. Make sure we got every single one. And clients with these type of lineups notice that, right? Because most barbers they'll go to... We'll line it up once and then send them on their way. And when they go take a shower, it's like their lineup is doing zigzags, right? So when you take your time, they definitely notice. Now we're going to move over towards his left, starting in the middle. And cutting straight through. And you always want to be careful with hairlines like this, that when you get towards the corner, since there is a lot of overhanging hair, that you don't line up past where his vertical bar would be. I see that often and they'll take it too far back. And then what they have to do, it just puts everything back in order to make it match. Right. So you want to be careful that when you get towards the corner, you're not digging farther back than where the top of that vertical bar should be. But from this angle right here, man, that taper is going crazy. The lineup is going crazy. And at this point in the haircut, I'm very confident and satisfied with how it is turning out. Now we're going to line up the bottom of the beard. And as you can see, my man's beard, it, it's nice, right? But it's not the fullest thing. But you'll notice after we line his beard up, this thing starts beaming. So I want to comb all these hairs down. He wanted to keep the length that he already had. So now we're going to start by lining up the bottom right where his Adam's apple is. 
and bringing that straight across i noticed that people whose beard isn't as dark when you frame out the bottom and give them a nice line on top it always enhances the beard makes it look fuller and darker than what it did before now we're gonna frame out the back and this just gives gives a stronger jawline a stronger beard line it looks more masculine they would say right but man look at that taper man it's not playing with me that taper's going dummy Now we're just cleaning everything up, making sure that we have a nice clean line. We're going to bring that straight across to the other side. So now let's get into most people's favorite part of a facial hair service is the beard line. So for the beard line, I like to start at the top and then work my way towards the bottom. I think this always helps me keep the top line as full as possible. Because a lot of times we chase the line that's closer to the mustache to get that super beamed up. But when you start at the top and work your way towards the bottom, it helps to keep it, you know, fairly high. Now we're cleaning up that front line up. We're going to clean up that taper a little bit. But as you can see, man, this taper with the trim and the beard line up is going crazy some people will call it edgar some people might not but again i thank you for watching make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and like always i will catch y'all next time peace so what they don't tell you about becoming a successful barber is you shouldn't start off by charging 100 dollars a haircut and you're not going to make this absurd amount of money without first getting clients in your chair so what i've done is put together all the information that i've learned in my nine years of being a barber into one place where I teach you about the different forms of marketing that best suit barbering to get clients in your chair. So that way you don't have to filter through tons, tons of content to find exactly what you need. As well as in-depth tutorials where I give you tips, tricks, and techniques to take your haircutting skills to a whole nother level. So if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and join me at Drake Clipper Hands Academy. I hope to see you there.